So tell me about uh, your career, when you started, what have you done? Um, well, it's hard to really say when I started because, I, I mean, I've been playing guitar for a long time, you know, like probably like 20 years or a little bit over 20 years. Um, you know, I started playing guitar back in Israel where I grew up and I had a great teacher by the name of Eyal Freeman, which is a ridiculous guitar, guitar player. Um, you say Marty Freeman? Uh, no, no. <laughs> but he's, um, he taught me so much, you know, he really made me a guitar player. Why Israel? I mean, are you... Uh... I grew up in Israel. Okay. That, that's just where I grew up. And I mean, I was born in America, but, yeah. you know, I grew up there in Israel. And um, until I was about 20, 21. So you release, I have some of your, of your albums here. I don't know if it's all, they are all of them. You have three at least. Uh, yeah. I want to try to show to the people. Yeah, this is, uh, this is my first instrumental record. This is Out of Oblivion, and this is on uh, Mike Varney's Magna Carta Records. Yeah. Um, this is an album that took me two and a half years to create, and I went all out on it. Uh, George Lynch plays on it, Greg yeah, Howe plays on it, Mike Mangini from Dream Theater, and then... The Extreme. Album, and Extreme, and Steve I, yeah, and mm. Annihilator, you know. Well, this is uh, the brand new CD. Um, I just finished it. This is my second instrumental record. Again. This is the second one. Okay. This is the second one. It took me two years to work on it. And live the dream. Yeah, live the dream. And it's not out yet. You know, the release date is not, um, is not set for that record. But I do have copies, you know, for the people who will be coming to see us on tour. So... Yeah, so these are like pre-release copies. The best ones. The best ones, yes. And, and yeah, that record, it had, um, you know, it has Dave Ellison playing bass on oh, some nice. of it. Yeah, Dave Ellison from Megadeth. Yeah. And this one? This is uh, also really brand new. This is an EP, a five-song EP of my band Burning Heat. Burning and Heat. yeah, this is again something that's unreleased and it's almost like a tour exclusive. Is that you, this guy? That's me, okay. right there, yeah. This guy, this guy here. Yeah, this is me at 9 in the morning, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's so why it's brand I'm new too. Pissed. What's that? It's brand new, I mean, yeah, 2003. It's brand new, you know, it's something that we managed to do quick enough right before the tour and it's like a tour exclusive and as far as the release date well we're not even sure yet you know because we have enough material for a full record mm. so we're not sure if we're gonna release the EP or go for the full record or you know we did it pretty you know pretty quick just for this tour and for people to start noticing burning heat and this uh, was an actual model or it was uh, just a draw because I want to know. That's, uh, yeah, I, I can't blame you for that. <laughs> but she's um, just, a, just a drawing, unfortunately. Okay, I, so tell me about your uh, influences. My influences. Um, it all goes back to Iron Maiden. You know, when I was 10 years old, my older brother, um, he had a cassette of the number of the beast in his, like, in his room. And once I ran into that, I was like, whoa, this looks so cool. I, I was just 10 or 11 years old. And I was like, you know, that drawing that Derek Riggs did was just like unreal. I, little did I know that, you know, like years and years later, you know, Derek Riggs would be, would be doing the cover for my first album. And he's a good friend of mine now. But that's, that's what drew me to like start listening to Maiden and I really dug it, you know, I was really young and, you know, and, and then I wanted to pick up the guitar. I started asking people like, what makes that sound? I'm like, this is like, I can't really picture any instruments really make, you know, creating that sound when you listen to heavy metal. You know, I was just a kid, I didn't know what it was and someone told me, that's an electric guitar. I was like, <laughs> really? 
and it can do that? <laughs> it's like, yeah. But as far as influences, yeah. Um, Iron Maiden made me want to pick up the guitar, and I got into like all that, all those 80s metal bands, you know, like Metallica and Megadeth and, you know, Van Halen and all that stuff. And then I started discovering all these guitar players, you know, of course, Inva Malmsteen, and then George Lynch, which I love, and Greg Howe, and Jakey e. Lee, and Nuno Betancourt, and there's so many, you know, Jason yeah. Becker, Racer X, um, you know, Andy Timmons, there's just like, there's so many of them, I, I really like all these guitar players, I, I just, I tried not to rip off one guy, you know, what? you know, like, there are a lot of guitar players out there that they're just in love with one guitar player, and they just try to do exactly what they're doing, and I mean, I love everyone, you know, so I kind of try to, you know, learn from everyone, and be as creative as I could possibly be myself, and yeah and that's pretty much it and you know there's just a, a lot of different influences you know i love flamenco and, and nowadays i listen to a lot of tommy emmanuel i think he's just the greatest guitar player uh, guitar player on the planet what, what band you will be part of if you have a chance um well a chance that i would never get would be be, be iron maiden, maiden obviously okay. um but I would love to play for Ozzy and you know like or White Snake or Alice Cooper Megadeth you know I mean I don't want to take anyone's job you know you know what I mean I don't want to step on anyone's toes well, somebody but, leaves you know yeah if if someone leaves you know I I would like to be considered for that you know and I'm doing whatever I can to put myself in that position your favorite guitar player my favorite I don't have one favorite, you know, I'm like... You gotta take one. Sorry, my, my question. Uh, <laughs> um, I would say Tommy Emmanuel is the best. Anything else you want to say about touring, future? Well, right now we're on the Inve Malmsteen tour, you know, and I'm doing the whole tour. The first half I'm doing with my instrumental band, the Ethan Brosh band, and that's actually tonight is actually the last night for that band so we're just exactly at the halfway point right here in Hollywood California the house of blues and um, yeah I'm looking forward to playing here tonight because uh, that's been a venue that I've wanted to play in for quite a while and But probably uh, people will watch it later no, yeah. the, not exactly tonight. Okay. Yeah, so we can just say like, oh, two months ago I, yeah, I played yeah, the House be of Blues or whatever. <laughs> it was a great show. And like, yeah, yeah. like two months ago was a good show yeah, in House. It was of awesome. Blues. Yeah, I didn't mess up like any notes or anything. <laughs> like <that>. <laughs> so, <laughs> but yes, to, uh, starting tomorrow, I'm gonna be featuring uh, my other band, Burning Heat, which is um, a regular hard rock rock and roll style band you know it's not an instrumental band it's oh, okay. with a singer and his name is carlos adriano riza and you know he's, he's got hispanic no he's well yeah he's uh from he's hispanic mexico. yeah he's from mexico and he's um he's a great guitar player and he's a great singer like he, he's got like vocals kind of like tom kefir from uh cinderella or you know kind of like the acdc vibe or whatever and yeah you know this is a band that we've put a lot into and we really put a lot of attention into songwriting and just bringing fun back to the music industry you know what i mean just like choruses that are catchy and riffs that are cool and like and guitar solos and and all that stuff and you know like there are no more rock and roll bands out there anymore you know it's just like yeah they're heavy metal bands they're super heavy and they all sound pretty much the same you know what i mean Inve is an intense person and, you know, in, in a good way. And he's just the most incredible player. And for me to, you know, check it out every night. And it's, it's amazing, you know. And for me to just, like, go on, like, right before he goes on. And the crowd reaction has been so good until now. At first I didn't know what to expect, you know. I figured, okay, I'll go in there and I'll have a bunch of guitar players looking at me like, hmm. <laughs> All right, so when when's Inve on, you know? <laughs> yeah. But it, it it hasn't been like that, you know. Like from the very first night, people have been cheering and screaming and like, you know, buying merch and all that stuff, and it's been really really great. So, you know, I you gotta feed yourself. You're skinny. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know what? I forget to eat, you know, in the music <laughs> business. So th that's the way it works. 
Well, you know, it's just I, I always take this opportunity at the, at the end of each interview, like to my fans or to the people who are just checking my music out for the first time, you know, I just want to extend a really big thank you to you guys because, um, you know, this is what it's all about and I really, really appreciate what you guys are doing for me. I, I meet so much, so many of you on the Invit tour and it's just been really awesome. You can always drop me a line, you know, I always try to communicate with everyone, so... If they want to buy the CD, how? Um, well, for now, uh, just go to ethanbrosh.com and uh, you can drop me a line and I can even send you the, the new CD if you just drop me a line. Okay. So. Thank you, man. Yeah. Well, have a good one. Thank you. Break a leg tonight. Yeah, thank you so much. Yeah, uh, two months ago, I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> You're gonna break a leg two months ago. Okay? Two months ago, yes. <laughs> we'll break Thanks. Those. And an arm and a finger. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>